In this video, I want to help you get started on the financial analysis of your company. So let me walk you through the steps. What you want to do first, step one, is load two Excel files. The first file is the Walmart file from, the, from Bloomberg. And the second one is the Excel file companies to select from. So you load those two files. I'll show you those two files in a second. The second thing you're going to do, step two, is you will find your company in the companies to select from file. And then select all and, and copy. Control C to copy. All right, so let me show you that. Here's the Walmart file. It comes up with this introductory page. Here's the file to select your company from. It's gonna, going to come up on Abbott Labs because alphabetically that's the first company. So let's, I'm going to do control page down and just look at the company. So you see they go alphabetically. So let's go through and let's say you're, you're doing, let's do BWA. Let's say you're doing BWA. So you get to BWA file, you hit this little triangle here on the top left, click on that, do control C so you get all the little ants running around. Then you go back to the Walmart file and you go over to Bloomberg. There's a page that says Bloomberg Pace Values. You're in, col you're in column A, row one, you right click and you click on this one, two, three to paste all the numbers, and that gets you all the numbers in there for your company. So there's step two. Step three, so you're in the Walmart. You won't need the companies to select from anymore, so that file you don't need anymore. So in the Walmart file from Bloomberg, you will paste as values in the Bloomberg paste value sheet. So that's step three. We just did that. Bloomberg paste values. We pasted it so we've got our company set up. So the next step is you're going to go in the Walmart file. Everything we do now will be in the Walmart file. You go to the page called tickers and in cell B2 we're going to type our company. So our company is Borg Warner, so we're going to type our company name. Now what you type here, this is on the page tickers in cell B2, what you type here is the name that's going to show up in all of your graphs and in the title. So you don't want to use too long of a name. If your firm is like Borg Warner Technology Solutions Inc., then just type Borg Warner. So some of you have companies Becton Dickinson, you can probably get all that in there, but um, that's about the about the max you'd want to do. If you get too long, you'll you'll have a problem. I'll show you how you can tell that here in a little bit later. But that's the next thing you do in cell B2 on the page stickers. So step four in the Walmart file in the sheet stickers in cell. B2, type your company name as you want it, you want it to display in the graphs. So B, and then just be careful. Sorry, my typing is really bad. Being careful to not let the name get too long because in graphs, the name's too long, then the, the legend gets all messed up on the graph. So I don't know what's too long, but I'll show you how you can tell. All right. Step five, again, in the Walmart file, go to print page one 
and see if there are any unusual things going on, especially in the CAGR column. This is where you can tell if maybe you have a company that's not going to work. I looked at most of the companies very quickly. I did not see anything. Now, there's a few of the companies in the companies to select from file where I say, rec I do not recommend this company. And I have it in all caps. So when you see those, I do not recommend those companies either because their data is real messed up. They may have negative net worth or they have losses almost every year. Sometimes the companies just have not been around very long, so you just don't have much history. So, But most of the others I think will work, but there's probably a couple of them that have some issues. So let's go look at that. So here's the print page one file. We're going to look at it. And just looking down, I don't see anything too big of an issue. Now you will sometimes see this NMF. That means not a mean, meaningful figure. That will hit happen for one of two reasons. In this case, it happened because the starting number was zero. Sometimes you'll get it, like here, it's number of employees, starting number was zero. Sometimes you'll get it because the starting number was positive and the last number was negative, or the starting number was negative, the last number was positive. It is okay to have a few NMFs, but if you're seeing like 10, 15, 20 of them, like almost every Every, every place it is an NFF. There may be something wrong with the data. And so, you know, that's just, just an issue that might make this company not, not a good one to use. So this one, Borg Warner, works well. There's not that many problems. Even though their net income has fallen dramatically, we somewhat expect that with some companies because of COVID-19. You can see their net income has dropped real dramatically the last three years. But that's, that's expected. We had a major crisis, so some companies will have that. So we're okay there. The next step, step six, the end again in the Walmart file, go to print page two and see if the graphs look reasonable. Are there any graphs that just are really off the charts. Now you're gonna have some, you have a few that are that that are spikes. So a few dramatic spikes is okay. And here's you know, but you don't want too many. You don't want every graph to be a problem. So here's a place where if you're not sure, give me a call or email me and say, hey, can you check Borg Warner? I was thinking about doing them, but some of the graphs on print page two don't look correct. So that avoids me having to go in and look at all 120 something companies in detail. I just looked at them high level and thought they looked okay. Uh, but this way, if you just email me when you have an issue, that way I only have to research five or six of them. And it just keeps me from having to, uh, you know, it just it's too time consuming to look at every single company. So you'll have to do a little bit of the screening for me. So we go to print page two and we look through the graphs. We're looking for any spikes. Here you can see the name I typed on the ticker page, Borg Warner fits well. If I type the name and look down here in the graphs, Borg Warner, Warner, if I typed a name that was too long, I'll just make something up here. So if your name is just a really, really long name, you can see it's going to mess up your legend. So you don't want to do that. So your print page too, that's where you can see if your company name works well. What we're looking for here is any spikes in, in the charts. This spike's okay. It's not that wild. It's, spikes I'm talking about is where it just goes off the chart. So this green line here is a little bit of a spike. But it's okay, it's in the 10% and the 90th percentile. Sometimes those will get off. We're mainly focused on our company. We don't see, I don't see anything with Borg Warner. That's that's just a really difficult chart. They don't have revenue per store, so that, that doesn't make sense. All of these, all of these look pretty well. You can see here the yellow line's a little out of whack, but that's the 10 percentile. So the 10 percentiles will probably delete those from the chart. But everything looks fine. So I don't see don't see any major issues here. So I can say, yeah, Borg Warner looks like it will work fine. So now that we see Borg Warner works, let me just quickly 
walk you through what's on this page. So when you're using the Walmart template, all of my comments in that Word document come from print page one and print page two. Now you're gonna see what I did is I created a separate sheet, I added a sheet where I collected the charts I was using for Walmart so I could change the titles and I changed some of the, um, the axis so this page you won't use. You'll delete this graphs used for Walmart and what you'll do is you'll create a page and you'll do graphs for Borg Warner. And so as you walk through the template for the financial analysis, you'll see me talking about in Walmart talking about chart one, then chart two, then chart three. And then when you have a 4A, 4B, 4C, I'll pick one or two of those. I won't use all three of them. Then you have chart five. I might take out the 90th percentile because it's so extreme. Chart six. Uh, I don't know why I have a chart 6A. I might change that to just chart six. So, so on and so forth all the way down. So this is what you're going to be doing when you do the financial analysis is using my template, using print page one and print page two. And then you'll notice what I'm using in the Walmart file with all the graphs are the graphs I copied and pasted over for graphs used for Walmart. So you'll create a graphs used for Borg Warner. You can just ignore the graph. You might leave the file, the page in there and just create your own sheet, graphs for Borg Warner. And so once you have this all set up, then what you want to do is do a file, save as, and put it somewhere on your computer, wherever I got mine and downloads, but wherever you want to save it and just change the name to maybe take the Walmart out and make it Borg Warner or what I mean, whatever your farm, firm is. You can leave the dates if you want to, however you want to do it. I'm still in August. You might do this in September. You can take off the beginning part if you want to, but just change it to a file name so that you know what it is it makes sense to you and then you have it you have the walmart file to, to look at the walmart template but now you have your borg warner file to look at the borg warner you have both files so this this gets you really set up for walking through the walmart template so in summary step one load those two excel files step two in the companies to select from find your company select all and hit Control c to copy Step three, go back to the Walmart file, and now you spent all your time in the Walmart file. Paste those values that you just copied into the paste value sheet in the Walmart file. Go to Walmart file to the sheet called tickers and cell B2. Type the name of your company just like you want them to show up on the graphs without too long of a name. Go look at print page one and make sure there's nothing unusual going on, especially in the uh, the Compound annual growth column or the CAGR column. Go to print page two and just make sure there aren't any really wild graphs. Remember, some of the graphs may be wild because the industry data, the 0.1 and the 0.9 percentiles may be wild. If that's the case, don't worry because on some of those graphs, we will actually delete those lines because they're just they're just too distracting. Really focus on, on your company. Does your company look like it's got something wild going on? You may have one or two charts but your company just looks really, really wild, but that's okay. That might be something that doesn't apply to your company, or it might be just one thing where you won't use the chart, and instead of using the chart, you'll just speak to it. The times interest earned can sometimes give really wild results, and what I tell students then is you'll just say, just talk about times interest earned. You might go to print page one and talk about the numbers, but not use the graph at all. So it's okay to have one or two to look wild, if you're not sure, email me, call me, and I'll make sure you've got a company that will work. All right, that's it. Good luck.